Hello everybody, it's Michael Hollands once again for Sound of the Movies. Today I have the pleasure to be joined by actor Jesse Cove. On today's episode, we will discuss his acting career and of course we will cover Cobra Kai Season 3. It is my pleasure to welcome Jesse Cove. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to have you on my show. Thank you very much for joining me today, Jesse. And... Jesse, at first, I would like to talk about your decision to become an actor. I mean, your father, Martin, is an actor. And as I understand, you spent a considerable amount of time on movie sets at a very early age. What was a defining moment for you personally? Yes, I did spend a lot of time on different movie sets, you know, um, around the world. I was very fortunate to travel. And, you know, it was a great experience to, to, to be able to do that. You know, I did feel I was very fortunate at the time. And still to this day, uh, you know, I just enjoyed being in those environments. I mean, there was, you know, I remember I was on set with my dad in India and there was a movie that he did about like a giant crocodile. <laughs> it was called like Crocodile 2, I think. And I remember when I was there, I was like playing in this huge you know, man-made pond that they created with this big building that was going to be blown up later on. And I was like a kid in Disneyland, except, you know, there was like action and, you know, a little bit of like horror, I guess. And, you know, it was such a different experience than being at home. It was obviously very creative. And the conversations that I would have with people when I was younger um, was just very interesting to me. And I, and I loved it. And then that kind of started the journey of me understanding what a movie set is and what, what filmmaking is all about. I was very lucky to be privy to that very young. And so I just naturally, you know, fell in love with it. And to this day, I still love it. It's like, I, I just don't even know if I could survive without, you know, watching movies and making movies. It's just such a part of who I am. I love telling stories and and being these characters. And, and so then that inspired me later on in life to, you know, want to do it professionally as a job and a career. Uh, when I was, you know, I started doing professionally about, you know, 17, 18. And before that I was in, you know, many different film schools and acting classes and, you know, my high school plays and doing theater. And so that's kind of the inception of it all. Okay, great. Thank you very much for elaborating on that. And you just mentioned the acting and directing classes which you took. And um, what was your takeaway from um, from those classes back then? You know, I think that you know, there's no perfect way to to do anything in the industry. You know, so it's, everything is changing and always, um, you know, there's a lot of you know you have adapting to do, and to the times or whatever's going on in technology, of course, and so. You know, I, I, what, one thing I love about film school and acting classes and all that stuff is like, you know, these are different. There's different tools that you're able to pull from and create your own style and your own craft. And, you know, I am still to this day nowhere near where I want to be uh, as an actor in my own craft. You know, I'm always trying to work it and grind it out and figure out what the best way is to do something, even just as simple as, you know, learning dialogue you know, um, there's repetition and all kinds of things you can do and typing them out and writing them down. You know, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way for me to do that. And, you know, I think I'll probably be doing that, you know, for the next 50 years, trying to figure out what the best way is to, to, you know, perfect the craft. And I think that's the beauty of, of acting is, is, you know, even to this day is that nobody really knows the perfect way to do it. And that's why we're so mesmerized by acting and movie making, because it's such a, it is such an unbelievable thing to be an actor and to make a movie and, or get a TV show made. And, you know, we, we just watch in awe as these people are playing these characters and they're emotional. And, you know, it's an incredible thing. It's magic. It's like magic. And so I think that when people do uh, different classes, they're able to learn new techniques and learn new things. I'm still doing that myself. And and, and that's how you create your own, you know, uh, like your cogwheel and your own pamphlet of, of what you can do yourself as an artist. I always say, like, when is like, when is that final paint stroke on a painting? When is that final word in a script? Is it ever really done? You know, you never know. I think that's the artist's curse and blessing at the same time. Yes, very well put. And I think if you get the chance to do something that you really love and if you are interested in the craft you evolve even more quickly and it basically never feels like work correct that is a huge one for me especially i feel like when i'm working when i'm on set it, it doesn't ever feel like work i am working but i i'm enjoying what i'm doing so much that you know it, it's just it's 
part of my passion of what I love to do. So, you know, I am very fortunate that I'm able to do that. And I, I remind myself constantly when I'm on set, how lucky I am to be able to do these things. And I think that's, I think it's important to, to keep that and to do that. And it is, it's, you know, if you, if you're lucky enough to be able to, I guess, you know, get paid to do what you love, you know, it's, it's a blessing and uh, it doesn't usually feel like work. What do you think is the most valuable life and or acting lesson you were given either by your dad or any other person? Probably listening. Listening is so important as an actor. You know, a lot of people think that it's everything is coming from you, but it is in a sense, but it's also about you listening to the other actor and the other performer because you're, it's a give and take between both of you. It's a communication. It's a dance that you're both doing. And, you know, to be able to just sit there and just listen to them It's almost, it's very interesting. I, I was talking about this yesterday. It's very interesting to watch an actor or an actress or listen to another actor is so fascinating to watch because you never know what they're going to do. I used this example yesterday. I was talking to someone. I was saying, if you were to just say one thing like, um, you know, well, we have to go that way. But if you said it in a way where it's like, well, we've got to go that way. It's just a little bit more interesting And you're kind of like, it's not so rushed. And it's the same thing when you're listening to other actors, just to watch an actor be still as humans are when we're just listening to people, it's sometimes hard to do because essentially as actors, all we're doing is we're being human. So to just be there and listen to people, because like also as humans, we don't like to cry most, most of the time we're we yeah. be ashamed of it. We're ashamed of it. We don't like to. So as an actor, you have to portray that as well. That's why when you see actors, holding back their emotions as that character it hits you so hard because you understand what that's like because it's not all about just pouring your emotions out in the moment it's like as that character you usually don't want to show those emotions so to do that as an actor is is part of like your craft and um so anyway back to the question sorry i went off a tangent listening is probably one of the best pieces of advice that i've had and also just taking your time great and of course As an actor, you also need to learn the ropes. You have to learn how to wor work with the camera, you know, the, um, the DPs and, you know, the producers, directors, and also the, the ADs. So, and I like to, I say that, that a lot, but to me, a film or filmmaking is like a puzzle and you can compare, let's say, acting or the uh, relationship between you and your co-workers you can look at it like a tennis match you know you also yes. have to to improvise a lot and you improvise a line and then you let's say change you, you tweak the line the meaning of it you change your facial expressions your peer bounces off of what what you did and then you just go along that i think is very important it's it's hugely important you know you have to be able to that's where some of the best you know, pieces of like cinema magic have happened. Um, you know, you're in the moment doing something and then you kind of go off on a tangent or you feel in the moment that you really, your character wants to do this, even though it's written this way, you know, and sometimes you just got to go for it and feel that. And sometimes what you do in that moment is sometimes um, you can never repeat it. You got it that once and it was, it was perfect. It was beautiful. It was in the moment. It was spontaneous. It came from within side. And, and that's happened many times. I've seen it happen. I've done it myself. And it's really like a piece of magic that, that you just, that's part of the, you know, cinema magic that happens. And that's part of improv. That's part of being able to like roll with what's going on in a scene. You know, you got to be able to like know your material so well that no matter what gets thrown at you, you know, you can just kind of roll with it and, and, and continue on. And sometimes something great may come out of it or something not, you never know. But usually I feel like that spontaneity will inspire um you know a great scene or you know with with your other partner and and with improv you know if it's something comedic you know you never know what's going to happen and and it's usually going to be something really funny that you didn't know was going to happen jesse do you have a certain criteria when it comes to um selecting a project you know story wise character wise and also genre wise i'm open to everything i love you know Obviously, it's fun, like if you were a superhero and all that stuff, it's just mm -hmm. it's just such a blast. You have so much fun doing that. But obviously, I, I am 
I love to jump at things that are challenging. Sometimes I don't get the opportunity, unfortunately, because, you know, some people or casting directors might judge that I can't play this role because of how I look, you know, oh, you know, Jesse's kind of like this handsome guy or whatever, you know, I mean, he can't play that, that nerdy dude. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm actually like a nerd in real life. You know, I've got all this memorabilia in my house, you know, Captain America shields and comic book uh, art and Harry Potter, um, you know, wands and things like that. And so it's kind of like, you have to be able to just either do it on your own, or you get a project that they can see you doing something like that. And uh, then they'll believe it, but, or you audition, of course, but, you know, I think that, that I just love things that are challenging and different. And I like to go against the grain of things. And I love doing comedy. I love playing outrageous characters that are high energy and silly and have an accent or whatever that is, you know, completely morphing yourself into something different. Um, you know, like how Johnny Depp just completely plays these characters that are just, you know, way out of left field and it's, and he does it brilliantly. I would love the opportunity to do those things as well. And I think that, having that challenge is really good because it, 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 you're able to, you know, open up your craft and open up what you're capable of doing as an actor and, and perfect that as well. You know, how can you, how can you do great work if you, if you don't really step outside the box, you know? Yes. And that's a very interesting point, you know, stepping outside or thinking outside the box. I mean, there is a term which we call typecasting, you know, as an, an actor, who, uh, let's say, um, is known for starring in action movies or comedies, and all of a sudden you get typecast, you know, they say, an, an agent might say, well, nah, we can't hire, hire you for a drama, you're known for comedy, so let's just stick to comedy, and so on. So I think versatility is also essential, and you start in quite, in, in movies which are, quite different from one another. I mean, on Wings of Eagles, for instance, a war movie or D-Day. How do you prepare for a project and how do you, let's say, become the character? The great question. Um, I think that a lot of it, I like to do, you know, there's, there's a balance of like creating this character and then also living that character because, you know, I am... I'm also someone that likes to, you know, they say you always pull from personal emotion. You know, sometimes I, some teachers or different, you know, coaches will say pull from your own personal emotion about something. I like to do that to some degree, um, but I also like to create those emotions as that character is experiencing them in the moment, whatever that is. You know, because if as you're that character, you know, I mean, you can pull it off thinking about, you know, um, thinking about um, your, the dead dog, they would say, yes. but um, it's, uh, I like to think of if there's a scene where, you know, a, a friend is passing away in your arms or something like that in a movie, like I actually think about something that I like about this character that, that I would be really sad about if I didn't have them in my life anymore as that character. And that will usually spark an emotion within me in that moment. Um, and I like to do that as much as I can, because that's part of being an actor is being able to create, you know, I, and a lot of it is like doing the livingness of something and the experiencing of it and inter interviewing people and doing your reading, you know, um, Russell Crowe said once, you know, the privilege is in the, is in the, is in the, the, the work that you have to do beforehand, you know, that's the privilege of an actor to do that. And, and like, you know, when I did my war movie, um, I watched endless amounts of, you know, World War II films. I, I read many books. Um, you know, I, uh, I did a lot to experience myself. There's, there's one thing I talk about I did, which was, which was kind of interesting was, you know, in, in the movie D-Day, I had to do a lot of shouting and, and, and command these <laughs> soldiers. And I needed to experience that in some way. And so I remember I was driving in my car and I thought to myself, oh, if I go on YouTube and I type in like sounds of war, you know, gunfire and, and helicopters and whatever. And I, I remember I did that and they had it on there and explosions. And I remember I turned the volume all the way up in my car. It was really loud. And I was driving on the freeway, at like, you know, 65 miles an hour. So the wind was going crazy. I put all my windows down and I turned the volume up and I started shouting out my dialogue as if I was doing it to these soldiers to kind of get the experience of this chaos going on around me and if I could deliver these lines and still have this this chaotic experience going on around me then I'd be able to do it on the day of and get an understanding of what that's like you know yes so 
And that was something that just came to me in the moment. I, I just thought, oh, I could do this and, and get that, you know? So it's kind of things like that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like a full on method actor, but I definitely like to immerse myself as much as I can. So talking to people and, and trying new things, you know, when I did the movie on Wings of Eagles, I, I had to lose a lot of weight because we went into an internment camp in the movie and Joseph Fiennes and I, we would run on the treadmill every day. We ate a very small amount of food and we kind of helped each other out that way, which was great. You know, it was like buddy, buddy. And, and so stuff like that, you know, I try to be as authentic as I can, um, you know, within reason, right. You know, some, sometimes people take it a little far and that's, that's okay, you know, um, and, um, you know, but I, I do, of course, also like to be as authentic, but I think every experience is different. And I think, you know, um, just trying to getting as comfortable with the characters you can diving into the script, reading, reading it over and over again. So you actually know your dialogue and the other characters dialogue as well in the moment, because once you, once you know the dialogue, you can basically, you obviously free yourself up to, to be spontaneous, to do those things we talked about. Yes, very true. And thank you very much for elaborating on that. And you just mentioned um, method acting. And I think interaction with your co-workers and the entire set relationship can be crucial to the success of the production. And I know there are method actors out there who fully immerse themselves into the character and they do not even talk to their co-workers they just uh, stay in character all the time and then they just disappear and they ignore them you know it's like the uh, sure. pr protagonist sure. protagonist antagonist kind of you know thing so it it depends on how you are wired as an actor i believe oh so i've experienced that as well and i've done a bit of that myself and you know everybody's process is different and you know if they need to go there to do that then that's that's what they need to do. If I need to go there to do that, then, you know, sure. If I have to live under a bridge for a week to, <laughs> to figure something out, you know, maybe that's what I need to do. You know, you never know where you're going to go with these, with your methods, but you know, I, I'm, I personally like to try and, you know, have a, a big foot in the door and also a little bit of my foot outside the door so that I can, you know, go back and forth, you know, and um, it's uh, because you have to remember at the end of the day, you are, the, your yourself playing a role it's not you you are not this person and you are acting and so you know if you take things too far you know you may get lost in this spiral of whatever it is and you know i think sometimes it's hard to like come back and forth from those things you know you got to remember yes. that and you know i remember i actually asked christian bale this once in an interview um uh he was we were at a screening and i asked him i said you know is it hard for you to to, to come out of these characters like, you know, Batman and it was for the fighter. And his answer was great. I loved it. He said, he said, it's, it's easier for me to get away from the characters who are really dark and depressing and all that than getting away from these other characters that I actually really love playing. You know, like when he played the, I forget the character's name in the fighter, you know, he's very skinny and gaunt and he was yes. kind of loosey. And, and he said he loved playing that character so much because it was a joy to be that guy. So it was hard for him to get away from that character because he enjoyed it so much, but the darker characters, he can easily step away from them because it doesn't really feel as good to play that person, which yeah. I thought was a, a totally different answer than I, than I expected. And which made sense, you know, um, because again, like you are, you know, you are acting, you are playing this character. And if you're having fun doing it, then you, you probably want to play that that character more. You know, another thing too, is like, I love to look at my dailies. I love to see, whenever I do a scene, I like to go back to Video Village. I like to see what it is. I'll, I'll talk to the director and we, we, we break down the moment and I'll look at it and go, oh yeah, okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm squinting too much or I'm, I'm, the physicality is not right. Oh, I see this moment and I can hit it here and do this and I, can, and I can work that in and then go back and do it again to really perfect the moment. You know, yes. and there's some actors that don't like to see their stuff, which is okay. That's how I, I like to, operate differently and I'm able to look at myself objectively and see how the audience might take this and then how my character might be in this way in the moment and you know there's a lot to process in your brain but yeah that's that's just how I work and you know I'll see things from five years ago I'm like oh I should have done this that way and I yeah. done, you know yeah. so anyway 
that's part of that. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. And I know there are actors who are not comfortable, you know, watching themselves on screen. But, you know, I think you are right. It, it, it may help to perfect your uh, your performance. And um, and of course, you know, if, if you re-examine you know, work you've done, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, I mean, you are most likely to say, well, I, I could have or should have done this differently because you constantly evolve and shape. As an, yes. as an artist and as a person. And I think that's just part of the learning experience of it all. It's constantly changing. You know, you look at all the greats, where they're at now, they were learning things back, you know, back in the day when they were starting out as well. And, and it's taken all this time. And as, as it is for me, I'm learning and becoming better and better. And, and um, you know, I just think that's part of the, the learning experience of it all. Very true. And Jesse, before we dive right into Cobra Kai, I would like to ask you, question yes. regarding your um, producing and directing efforts. I mean, you had directed a short film called The Audition, which mm. is about the uh, trials and tribulations of actors and um, as they try to, how do I put it, maintain their dignity in a world of, you know, film agents and coaches and directors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you also produced and starred in the film As Night Comes. Do you wish to focus uh, on producing and directing maybe down the road or do you wish to wear different hats so that's a perfect way to put it is the different hats right you know producing is 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 a producing is a lot of fun because you basically as a producer you have the freedom to basically do what needs to be done to get a movie made because that's like literally the definition of a producer you are producing something from nothing so as a producer you make sure this person has these tools and this money comes from this person to meet together to make a movie. And on all aspects, whether an actor needs something or post-production, whatever that is, you know, it's a big responsibility as a producer. You, you stick with something for like the next year or so to make sure that it's made and then carried out and distributed and then sent out to the world to see. And then you hopefully make a return on it. And it's a lot of fun. And it's also very creative at the same time. You know, you have a great relationship with the directors and, and other producers and you guys can create as well at the same time. And it's just a lot of fun because you're also telling stories, you know, from a different perspective, you, you know, the business aspect of it. And it's just, it's, it's great. And I also love directing as well. I love working with actors, love working with actors. I love, I love getting in there with an actor and, and producing these scenes and, and creating moments and, and telling these great stories that will hopefully move people and inspire people and, and entertain them as well. Um, and so it's just a lot, it's really a lot of fun to be behind the camera. And I think it's a great experience for anybody who's an aspiring actor to really go on the other side. And, and you can learn a lot because when you're on the other side of the camera, you, you get a better understanding of what is needed from the actor. And then when you go back in front of the camera, you go, Oh, well, right. That's right. He wants it this way because of this. I remember. And, and uh, it's just, a, it's again, another tool to add to understand the grand scope of, of, of making movies and television. And even from a casting director's perspective, like when I had to cast that movie, it was such a learning experience to cast actors and to really see what is needed in those moments from the actor. And, and a lot of the time it has nothing to do with the dialogue or them knowing their lines. It's really about the actor understanding this character and getting the moments and, and bringing their own interpretation of that character to the table. Because, you know, you're watching them and you're like, oh, he was just brilliant as that guy. And yeah. you don't even care about if they fumbled some lines or didn't get the dialogue right. He was the guy. And that's like, you want this, this actor because they, they just got it. And maybe they showed you something different about that character that you didn't even know yes. could, could come to life. So that's the magic of it all as well, you know? So I guess it's, it's important to be on that side as well. Even when you're editing, you know, because directors, when they're shooting movies, they're cutting it in their head as well. They're watching each scene and they're thinking, okay, this is going to cut with this scene that we're going to shoot here in moment to moment. And that's how, that's how a lot of directors operate. And so to know that as an actor, again, it's just really great to understand that. Yes. And I think, you know, being given the chance to work behind the camera will ultimately help you to become an even better actor, actually. Yeah, you 
um, let's say, get to know different uh, aspects of the business and you will learn about movie making, how to create a movie, how to edit a movie, and you will start to look at performance differently and pacing and so on. Everything that is essential about the movie, ma movie making process. Yes, it's important. And then you're able to like communicate these things better to people and having a better understanding. Um, and it's just, uh, I think it's important to, to know all those things. You know, when I started out, you know, over 10 years ago, I, I was working as a production assistant on several movies. Some of them were happened to be my dad's movies and just some that I was looking to, to learn the ropes, even though I grew up in the industry, it was great to just to be a PA and understand how things work and, you know, to, to run some errands and to help, you know, get this actor's sides and, and just do whatever and, and be on set and understand how it works. Yes, absolutely. And thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on that, Jesse. And now let's dive into um, Cobra Kai. Yes. The Netflix hit series based on the Karate Kid franchise. And I must say, I'm a big fan of the Karate Kid franchise. And of course, Cobra Kai okay. is, is a great series and a, lots of fun to watch, um, filled with great characters and an interesting story. And... If you were to re-examine, let's say, the Karate Kid movies and also all episodes of Cobra Kai, is there any standout moment for you, any specific character which you love in particular, any favorite moment that you could share with me? Um, let me take a sip of my, my, my Cobra Kai elixir here. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's... They're all such great characters. I mean, obviously the relationship between, you know, Daniel and Miyagi is incredible. The whole father-son relationship and mentor relationship is incredible. You know, Mr. Miyagi's history. Um, but I think as the show has gone on more and more, I really love, you know, the 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 backstory that's happened from my dad's character, John Kreese, because there's so much there that we didn't know about. And also Johnny, of course, it's really hard. You know, Johnny's backstory as well. But I think that my favorite is the relationship of Johnny and, and John Kreese, you know, their relationship. It's a very interesting one. You know, it's that love hate relationship and father son relationship because both characters come from like, you know, battered uh, home lives. And then they found uh, an understanding and love between each other because they, they, you know, one was the father, one was the son and they needed that for each other. So I think those two dynamics are really just fascinating you know the push and pull of that you know they they uh, they and you know the writers um john hurwitz and hayden schlossberg and josh Heald, they just they just did that perfectly and you know and they, those guys know they know what the fans want and because they're fans of the show themselves so they're basically writing things that they want to see because they know everybody wants to see those things um and so i think those that the, the relationship between the two of them is probably uh, my favorite Right. Yes, and that's a very good point. I mean, the uh, teacher-student relationship, which comes to an end at the end of Karate Kid One, when you know Johnny loses to Daniel in the in the in the tournament, and then Chris loses all of his students as a result. So that that was very interesting. And you starred in Cobra Kai, season three, episode number two. The dinner scene, Correct. the dinner scene, and also the um, the fight scene, and those flashback sequences were very important, and they also showed the sensitive side of of Sensei Kreese back then. That was really interesting. Yeah, I thought it was it was really brilliant that they did that because you know I think people really needed to see that backstory of Kreese, and then to also see him as basically the underdog. You know that he wasn't. He wasn't the top dog everywhere he went, you know, even though he has this persona that he is, um, you know, in in the in the dojo, it, it's just it really humanizes him and allows you to act, really feel for him and to feel bad for him and to understand where he's come from and, and to maybe justify some of the actions that he's dealt with, you know, much like, you know, not that he's as evil as this character, but like, you know, when you watch like the Joker with like Joaquin Phoenix, you know, you kind of see the history of where he's come from and, and, you know, is it his fault? Is it, you know, you kind of have a more understanding of why he is this way and you have, you have a better understanding of why he's doing what he's doing. And obviously some, you know, pretty much everything he does is not warranted, but 
you know, you have a, a more intimate relationship with them. And I think that's what people are really resonating with is having a closer relationship with those characters. You know, you're able to go and see Daniel go to Japan and you're able to see, you know, all the kids and where they come from and their, their struggles. And I think that's what people love is having these relationships intimately with these characters and to expand upon that as they did with my sequence was important for John Kreese and to see that he was actually bullied himself by his own son. <laughs> and um, I think that was also a great thing and a cool thing to do. You know, I was really grateful to be able to step up to the plate and do that. It was a total surprise. You know, I auditioned for the role and I worked my ass off for that audition. And um, luckily I, you know, I, 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 I did them proud, I guess, and got the role and, you know, and I met, you know, the guy who's playing young crease, Barrett Carnahan, who was just a great guy, lovely guy, took it just as seriously as I did and was and was just as excited to be there as me. And, you know, we had a blast working together and and we knew what we were doing for the history of the show and and the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. Like we were in the OG Karate Kid universe within Cobra Kai, you know, which was. Yeah incredible i don't know how how many times they're able to go back and do that so what we did was a very special moment and you know i'm forever grateful and and humbled by the experience and you know it was important for them to do that in the show and you know as they continue to show the backstory of crease even in the end of season three you know they show him in war and the struggles that he dealt with and yeah. how much pain that crease is actually in from his upbringing so i think you know, and having that understanding going forward as they're shooting season four right now, you know, it's 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 great to have that backstory when they when they come back with the next season. Yes, great. And of course, Chris had to fight in order to be accepted by other people and to overcome bullying. And you were also, or your character in season three was also co-responsible for shaping the character of Chris and who he has become eventually. You know, right. Right. Yeah. It was really, you know, I remember like when I was in the audition room, I asked them like, how, how much of a, basically how much of a, a jerk do you want this guy to be? And they're like, we want all the way. Like, you just hate him. <laughs> I was like, all right, I can, I, I can do this. I actually enjoy playing kind of the darker characters or villainous characters. I just, I really enjoy it. There's a freedom that you get from playing these characters. And, um, so, you know, I went for it and, and, you know, it was also, it was great to do that for his character. You know, even when I'm, unfortunately, I, you know, it's terrible. I slap, you know, Emily Palmer who plays uh, Betsy, uh, you know, when we did the scene and, and before each take, I was like, ah, I'm so sorry. I really don't want to do this to you. And she's like, it's okay, go for it. You know, I didn't really hit her, but you know, we did the whole thing. Yeah. And then Chris comes out and propels him to stand up for her. And, you know, and then we have this big fight and it's just great. You know, he ends up stealing my girl and, you know, in, in, in becoming, you know, turning into the man that he is and then going to war. And, you know, I crumple up that the, the Vietnam paper and I throw it over my shoulder yes. and he finds it and discovers it. So there's all these incredible moments that carve out his life within that short period of time, you know, that my character was able to do. And so, you know, and then he went off and, and did what he did. And it was just it was incredible. It was just incredible. I think that's why there was so much that went on in that short bit of time that was monumental. Yes, and, and it was a great scene and sequence. I mean, I loved how they managed to create this um, period piece, if you will, you know, of the of the 60s, you know, the car. And, yeah. and, and the directors even, you know, the writers and creators, they said that they were so happy that day because it was a big day. They had all those cars, like you said, the big diner, tons of extras, you know, the wardrobe from the 60s. And they, they were so excited because they, they were like, oh, we've never really done a period piece before. This is essentially our first period piece. And they shot it in a very cinematic way different than they would, you know, the, the, the normal show. So it was also special for them as well. And, you know, even, and, and again, it was filled with Easter eggs, like the car that I drove, the yellow Ford that I drove was actually the original Miyagi car that Mr. Miyagi gave to yes. Daniel in the movie, um, which was such a surprise and such a treat, uh, you know, that they, they, they told me that day that I was doing that. And so I remember when I got in the car, I was like, God, the history that this car has been through. And then to then be in this scene, you know, with young Crease, 
it was just it was like a dream it was a total dream yeah but your char character wasn't too happy with the car i mean and the, i think your 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 second line is i need to get something with more muscle <laughs> let's scrap this junk and get some muscle yeah, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. i didn't appreciate the, the the artistry of it maybe i sold it to miyagi later i don't know <laughs> Jesse, have there been um, discussions about you playing a different character maybe in season four? They, um, I mean, they've, there's been public talk about a Kree spinoff, you know, whether my involvement in that is, is real or not, I'm not sure. We don't know. Um, and, you know, if I did, I probably wouldn't say anything. Um, but, you know, they, <laughs> the writers have talked about doing something like that. And if I could be a part of that, it'd be, it'd be incredible. And I think it'd be fun for fans to see the expansion of that character again. And, you know, obviously, I mean, look at what's happened with Cobra Kai. So it'd be fun to see these other characters within the show, um, you know, see their history and where they came from and, and be able to open up those stories for new ideas and new characters to come in and love interest and, and struggles and, you know, within those times. So it would be incredible. You know, I'm, I'm very close with the writers. They're such great guys. You know, they have a lot of great work coming up and, you know, um, You know, obviously they're shooting season four now and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for fans to see it. Um, you know, obviously I've talked to my dad about it. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a pretty incredible season for a lot of fans, right. for everybody. Right. And it will be interesting to see which other characters of the Karate Kid past they will bring back or might bring back. Of course, you know, we had Tamlin Tamida uh, in, in season three who played um, Kumiko. There was Yuji Okamoto. Yep. And there, there, there has been some some talk and some some rumors uh, about you know um, concerning the person your dad calls at the end of season three, and it might it might be a Silva. Let's see what happens. It will be interesting. Is there anything else you would like to add about your career, about future projects? Anything else you would like to share with me and our audience? You know, I some other interviews always ask this question, but like, you know, if you were to give advice to anybody and, you know, a lot of advice that's helped me and that I like to share with other actors and artists is like, you know, you know, continue to be relentless. Don't take no for an answer. You know, you go and create your dreams like everything is here for you. You just literally have to go and take it and it's there uh, and you just you you go make that happen. No matter how many times people say you can't do this, I can't tell you how many no's that I've had, even my my father's career, how many naysayers there have been um but once you create something once you start you're already ahead of everybody and then everybody wants to get on a moving train so you know whatever that is just keep keep doing it yes great advice and of course everybody hates reject rejection but we all have to face these problems at some point yeah, and of course, of course there are many people who um, or many naysayers but of course it's difficult not It's difficult to ignore that and just to do your own thing and just keep going. And it takes patience, it takes preparation, and it takes stamina. So um, I think it can be really difficult. But if you hang in there and if you're patient and hardworking, you know, it, it certainly pays off. Yeah, my dad said this great, uh, I forget where he got it from. He told me, he's like, the movie industry and the acting and your acting career is like a yo-yo on a golden string going up and down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's um, that's very true. And of course, it not only applies to actors, I think it, it applies to most people working in the film industry, you know, be it an actor or a director or a composer or an AD or a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Jesse, thank you so very much for taking so much time out of your schedule. I really appreciate that. I had a great time talking to you and I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. Oh, you as well, Michael. I really, really did enjoy this conversation. It was, uh, it was delightful.